Welcome to this lecture on travel costs and temporary workplaces for employees. My name is Dean Wooten. In this lecture, we're going to look at what employee travel costs are deductible or allowable. If the employer pays employee travel costs and they're not allowable, then obviously that's a benefit for the employee. So we're looking at whether there is this benefit or whether uh, the employee has no benefit. And that does depend on whether the travel costs are regarded as an allowable expense. An employee travel costs will be allowable if the expenses are necessarily incurred on travelling in the performance of the duties of their employment or attributable to the necessary attendance at any place in the performance of duties of the employment. Now, ordinary commuting is specifically denied in this. Ordinary commuting is defined as travel between either the employee's home and a permanent workplace or somewhere like a hotel and a permanent workplace. So if we're travelling from, say, a home to a temporary workplace, then that can be an allowable deduction. And if the employer pays the employ uh, employee for that tra trip, uh, then that wouldn't be a tax or benefit so just to re-emphasise, office-to-client travel is fine. Home-to-client travel depends. It depends whether the client's premises is a permanent workplace, unlikely, uh, or a temporary workplace, quite probably. Um, but there are occasions when the temporary workplace can become a permanent workplace because you go there so much. And that's what we're going to concentrate on this lecture. And we're going to try and find out when does a temporary workplace become a permanent workplace? Yeah, when do these travel costs stop being deductible? Well, temporary workplaces are defined. So a temporary workplace is a place which the employee attends in the performance of his duties in order to perform a task of limited duration or for some other temporary purpose. Now, a workplace will not be temporary if the employee attends for a period of continuous work lasting more than 24 months. So two years. A period of continuous work is a period over which the duties of the employment are performed to a significant extent at that workplace, 40% or more of their time at that place. You know, that is what is regarded as significant. So what you're looking at really on this is 40% of their time for two years. So if you're going somewhere for 40% of your time, i.e. two days a week, uh, for two years, then it be regarded as a permanent workplace and no travel costs are deductible. And if the employer pays you for travelling, then unfortunately that is a taxable benefit. A temporary workplace may become a permanent workplace if either the employer has worked at the location for a continuous period of 24 months, so a continuous period, two days a week, 24 months, or it becomes apparent that the, that the absence from the original permanent workplace will exceed 24 months. Now in these instances, travel costs up to the point of change are deductible. Costs after that date are not. So what this rule is trying to say is you don't wait necessarily for the 24 months to come. Uh, so for example, if I know I'm going to go somewhere for three days a week for three years, uh, and then I know that from the start, then that's not a temporary workplace because you're going somewhere for more than two, two days a week for two years, so you know at the start. If, however, it starts off as a one-year assignment, three days a week, then that's all right. But then at the end of that one year, if it's then renewed for another two years, say, then I know at that point uh, that it's become a permanent workplace. Uh, so you do get deductions up to a point, um, but then that point, uh, can, you have to stop effectively. I'm saying this is an allowable trip. It's not, because the temporary workplace has become a permanent workplace. Now, we look at these rules by way of examples. So, illustration one. Uh, Judith lives in Didcot and has worked for her employer for the past five years in Oxford. She's sent by her employer to work full-time in Bracknell for 18 months, after which time she returns to Oxford. Now, obviously, there's no relief for commuting from home to Oxford. It's ordinary commuting. But when she's asked to go to Bracknell for an 18-month period, uh, that is a temporary workplace. Even though she's going there yeah, full-time, it's only for 18 months. So therefore, that's a temporary workplace. The travel costs from home to that temporary workplace, they will be allowable. 
If, however, after, say, 12 months, the secondment is extended to 28 months, then at that 12-month point, the travel deductions stop being there. So, effectively, if you still pay travel, then that will become a taxable element of travel. Uh, so, Brighton will become a permanent workplace. If it was, let's say, one day a week for three years, then one day a week isn't enough. It needs to be two days a week for two years. Uh, so if you've got that, or you expect to have that, then that is no longer a temporary workplace. Rainer lives in Cleckheaton and works in Leeds five days a week. His employer sends him to work in Manchester for one day a week for three years. That's all right. Uh, Leeds is the permanent workplace. Cannot claim that. So you click Heaton to Leeds. That's just, that's just ordinary commuting. Uh, but Manchester, that's a temporary workplace. One day a week uh, for three years. That's absolutely fine. That 24-month rule will only apply where there is a continuous period of work. That is 40% of your time for 24 months. That is two days a week for two years. That is not what we've got here. So therefore, Manchester is a temporary workplace. And what you've got is travel costs being allowable. So if the employer pays, that is not a taxable benefit. David is required to spend two months working at his employer's Edinburgh office. He normally works in Cardiff. David flies to Edinburgh on Monday morning, stays in a hotel and travels home Friday afternoon. He has his meals either in the hotel or a local restaurant. Edinburgh is a temporary workplace. So the costs of journey to and fro Edinburgh are deductible as are the costs of hotel accommodation and meals. This is a temporary workplace. Two years, two days a week, not met. So therefore, temporary workplace, travel, accommodation, food, that should be fine, absolutely allowable. If the employer pays, it's not a tax of benefit on David. Well, that concludes the lecture on temporary workplace. My name is Dean Wooten. Thank you for listening.